going on on my YouTube videos. I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. Crossing another movie off the 100 movies bucket list and this is another movie in my pre-1980 classic review series. A couple times a month I try to review classic movies prior to the release of 1980 with a specific theme. This month's theme in May being classic Stanley Kubrick films released prior to 1980. Earlier this month I reviewed Dr. Strangelove and 2001 A Space Odyssey. And today I'm reviewing yet another one of Stanley Kubrick's most infamous films. This is actually one of his most controversial films he's ever made. I'll dive into that in my review. Today I'm reviewing his 1971 crime drama, A Clockwork Orange. <laughs> A Clockwork Orange was released in 1971. It was one of Stanley Kubrick's most controversial films. If you know me, I'm not a big crazy fan of Stanley Kubrick. I don't rank him as one of my absolute favorite directors compared to most people. I, I find his directing style incredibly pretentious and a lot of his movies I tend to have love-hate relationships with. Like I'm not the craziest big fan of Dr. Strangelove and if you saw my 2001 video, while I admire it, I have a lot of frustrations with that film at the same time, even though I still gave the film a positive grade. There are a few exceptions. I do like some Kubrick films. I actually do highly enjoy Barry Lyndon. Uh, Spartacus, I think, is a really good film. And my favorite Kubrick film I've seen by far is The Shining. That one is masterpiece, in my opinion. That film is excellent and it's one of the best horror films of all time. Naturally I was curious to see where I'd fall on a clockwork orange especially being one of his most controversial films. So what do I think of this movie? Let's find out together. So in a clockwork orange in a near future Britain young Alexander DeLarge and his pals get their kicks beating and raping anyone they please. When not destroying the lives of others, Alex swoons to the music of Beethoven. The state, eager to crack down on juvenile crime, gives an incarcerated Alex the option to undergo an invasive procedure that'll rob him of all personal agency. At a time when conscience is a commodity, can Alex change his tune? Well, yeah, this is one messed up movie. And this is one of the most controversial movies of all time, especially for its time in 1971. I can imagine people's first reaction seeing this film and its original release, seeing something that was this bonkers and violent and just plain cruel to watch. Uh, you have Alex, played by Malcolm McDowell, and his buddies. The first 30 to 45 minutes being probably the roughest aspects of the entire movie. You see them beating this homeless elderly man who's drunk and then they go into this rich man's house and they beat and rape his wife with Alex singing Singing in the Rain by Gene Kelly in a scene where you'll probably never think of that song the same way again. And then there's other sequences too, but those two really stand out and yeah, I can see this upsetting so many people because this movie, if you were just looking at the opening sequences of the movie alone, are quite messed up. In fact, when I first saw this, just not too long ago, I was orig I originally thought I was going to hate this movie, to be honest, because I thought the way Kubrick was handling violence and sexuality was done to an extreme to where it almost felt like he was celebrating the character's actions, especially with its choice of classical music, which sounded a lot more celebratory than horrifying. Uh, movies I tend to enjoy of this nature are movies that show that this character is messed up but you see the cracks and the damages of such a dangerous person to where you're invested in the storytelling and the tragedy of it all. That's why Joker was my favorite movie 
of 2019. Another movie I saw recently, American Psycho, showed how wrong the main character's actions were, even if the actions he did was very, very messed up and disturbing to watch. Here, it almost felt celebratory. Uh, I felt grossly uncomfortable throughout this movie, especially the aforementioned rape scenes and the way uh, the women were treated in this movie. Uh, knowing Stanley Kubrick's perfectionism, and I know the treatment he gave to Shelley Duvall on The Shining, I am really questioning the sanity of Stanley Kubrick and the way some of these scenes were done. Uh, it's quite disturbing, actually. It really is. And I don't want to go into full-on detail on this because I almost feel dirty talking about A Clockwork Orange. It's a movie that, for its time, I don't, I don't know. This is a movie that's so grimy and it's so evil to look at that I thought I was going to hate this movie. The movie, I feel like if you get past the opening scenes... And you get to where Alex is in prison. For me, that's when the movie actually does pick up some steam. Because I originally thought this was a self-indulgent piece of artistic trash when I first t put on A Clockwork Orange. But once Alex is in prison and we get to the government giving him the option to take this breakthrough drug that can, that can allegedly cure him of his evil tendencies... That's when the movie got interesting because then the movie started poising questions about society and free will and stuff like that. And while the movie still has some interesting little flavors in there to cure Alex of his tendencies, the movie, at least I could tell what Kubrick was trying to say. We, we have this serial killer who's done some evil things. He's now in prison and... This idea of a drug, a life-altering drug, comes in, and it leaves you the question, like, what would you, if you were in his shoes, would you take this drug? And when you took the drug where it looks like you're being deprived of your free will, uh, after he's taken the drug, uh, whenever Beethoven's knife comes on, which is his favorite song of all time, he finds it evil now, and he can't watch movies the same way again. He can't look at certain things the same way again because he's conditioned. Violence is bad. Sex is bad. Beethoven is bad. And that was very interesting. That I angle, I thought was very interesting. And then the whole notion of, you know, when you've released somebody from prison after getting this drug... Uh, how does that impact your friends and family? And that whole angle of the film, I thought, was quite captivating. The movie actually took a more sympathetic turn that I didn't expect, considering how sadistic the opening sequences of the movie were. And then the movie takes an interesting path at the very end on how people perceive the drug and the government's response to the people's backlash and how what their response is to the Alex character and where that all leads. Uh, the ending is very interesting. It's very ambiguous, as you expect in a Stanley Kubrick film. And I'm still peeling the cracks of this movie to see what Kubrick was trying to say on this film. I'm debating on whether to make this a spoiler review or not, because I, I feel like I need to talk about the ending of this movie, so... Full circle, Alex nearly drives to the point of suicide. He he reunites with the husband of the woman he raped at the beginning, and it turns out he's a political extremist, and he's trying to use Alex's drug, the drug that was taken as a way to go against the government, but he also finds out that of his past, and that he raped his wife, and so he plays Beethoven in Revenge, and it drives Alex to the point of suicide. He jumps out the window, meant to believe he died, but no, he broke all his bones and he's recovering in the hospital, but the people are against the government because they thought the treatment they gave Alex was bad. And so the government comes in and in this good mood, try to help him out. 
or convince him that they're helping him, but it turns out they just need him as a tool to get the people to trust the government again. Big boom boxes and speakers come in the room blaring Beethoven, and soon enough, Alex sees his violence and sexual tendencies back in his brain, and he says, I'm cured now. And I took that as the government to realize they messed up after the public hated them, and they're now putting his tendencies back in his brain intentionally making him become a serial killer again to get the people to fear the government once again as criminals are coming back on the loose. That's the way Kubrick fought. That's a pretty messed up way to go, especially in how the movie was set up. I think it shows that regardless of side in politics, I think it Especially in the state this government is portrayed. I think whether you're left or right. What do you do in this situation? This is quite a messed up movie and how things have gotten horribly south with the rise of criminal activity and uh, how far would you go to try to control the people? That's a, quite an interesting ending. Man, this movie, like, this is a, this is a strange one. I will say the performances are all really good. Malcolm McDowell is great as Alex. I, you see a lot of layers in his performance, especially when you see him post-drug. Post the drug, post the drug uh, he's fantastic. And he's also viciously cruel in the opening sequences. And he embraces his part to a T. The movie, like every Kubrick film, is well-directed. Kubrick's a perfectionist, so obviously the cinematography is going to be great. The movie's gonna have some great tracking shots, and the movie's gonna have some interesting angles to each sequence, and it's gonna have some like bombastic sets. I expected that, and this movie actually does look really good. I do like a lot of the shots. I actually do like the opening shot, the close-up of Alex's face, and it backs up, and you see the state that he and his buddies are in. I do like the opening shot. The score I'm kind of hit and miss on because the Beethoven sounded celebratory in the opening sequences, but then I did like the score as it intensified near the end. But then it did take some weird angles, like there's a prison sequence and it had pomp and circumstance, the graduation music in there, and I thought putting that in Fantasia 2000 was weird. It's just as weird as in this movie. One part I did enjoy, after this madness of the movie was over, they played Gene Kelly's version of Singing in the Rain. And of course I had to sing along to it because I love that song. Gene Kelly's excellent and I love the Singing in the Rain, the movie, and that's a movie I want to tackle later on in this pre-1980 classic series. Clockwork Orange, man, I, I, I don't know. Like, the parts of this movie I detest and despise. And other parts of this movie I find really interesting. It's another one of them love-hate movies for me. Man, this and 2001 A Space Odyssey, these are like the most complicated movies that I think Kubrick's ever made. And I don't know how to process this movie, especially this being my first time. 2001 I've seen like four or five times now, and this is the first time I've seen Clockwork Orange. I don't know what to rate this movie, because... It's well directed, it's well acted, there's a lot of interesting things to say like I've already discussed, but if the opening sequences weren't so cruel and sadistic and near celebratory, I think I'd love this movie a lot more. But I did enjoy the ideas that were present in this film. It, it was kind of neat seeing the mind of a serial killer explored, even though I think it's done better in movies like American Psycho and Taxi Driver and Joker. I think did it a lot better. And also the whole idea of free will in circumstances like this. This did intrigue me throughout. This is a movie, again, I want to love this movie. I really do, but there's a lot of issues I have with it, like the execution of it and the way Kubrick handled the most extremes of our main character circumstance. It's, I'm very much polarized by this film, if I'm being honest. But I know what I am gonna rate this film after deliberation, and I'm giving A Clockwork Orange a mild positive grade, because 
I think the positives do outweigh the stuff I hate about this movie because of how well made it is. And I'm going to give Clockwork Orange a three and a half out of five stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 66 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of A Clockwork Orange as part of my 100 Movies Bucket List series and my pre-1980 classic review series where two or three times a month I review classic movies prior to the release of 1980 with a specific theme. This month's theme being Stanley Kubrick films and the three classic Stanley Kubrick films that I reviewed this month, A Clockwork Orange, Dr. Strangelove, and 2001 were all on the 100 Movies Bucket List poster and I wanted to scratch them off to continue expanding and crossing off every movie on that poster even if it's movies that I've already seen before. I've definitely been enjoying both series. I'll leave links down in the description below for movies that I've tackled in both series, the 100 Movie Bucket List and the pre-1980 Classic Review series. In both playlists there's a wide variety of reviews of uh, different genres so if you're a fan of classic cinema or cinema in general definitely check the links down below to see more I definitely have a lot more movies to cover in both series uh, especially in the pre 1980 series where I'm planning on covering a wide variety of genres and directors a lot of classic movies released prior to 1980 many of which are movies that often get overlooked on YouTube Join me next month in my pre-1980 classic series where I'm reviewing movies starring the Beatles. Yes, I mean everybody's favorite rock band, the Beatles, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. They actually did star in several movies together and I'm going to dive into their filmography in the month of June starting with 1964's A Hard Day's Night. Definitely look forward to that review coming very, very soon. But if you've seen A Clockwork Orange, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you as polarized as I was? Whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, music reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!